we got a few more people in here now and I'm gonna start recording. If it's okay with you, I'm gonna start throwing some questions at you while we look through some charts and some of your scanners. Yeah. There's a chat for this thing, right? Uh, like a text chat? Yeah. Yeah, in the live voice chat channel, uh, it should pop up under trade floor. That'll kind of pop up. So if anybody in here has questions uh, for him, let them know. But I'm going to throw some questions at him as well. Uh, and f So feel free to ask as many questions as you guys have. As more people join in, you know, we'll let them know that they can ask as well. Uh, but basically, you know, what are these scanners? You know, what, 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 uh, what made you bring them together and what made you, you know, share them in chat the way you do? Well, it all started off because um, when I started and I started seeing how everybody prepares for their their day and i realized that for me with my schedule it's a little bit difficult to be able to replicate that you know on top of me being i think i've been in this for about eight months now so i'm still trying to learn how everybody else charts their patterns and picks their watch list and stuff like that you know and it was getting frustrating you know with the schedule that i had so i was like you know what what i'm saying everybody knows how to go about searching for their place so I thought to myself, how about I make the place come to me? You know what I'm saying? Maybe not just immediately, okay, it pops up in my, my path and I and I grab onto it, but at least have it come to me where I could start applying my technical an analysis, apply what I already know at this point, you know, and just go from there. So I started with, after I finished reading the can Candlestick Bible, you know, I started applying the scanners to that. And then the BB Trader course, when I started learning more from that, I traded, I made a scanner off of that. And honestly, I see the chats and see what kind of strategies you, everybody uses, because there's more than a hundred strategies that people use. So I started making scanners off of those, you know, it's, it's really the idea is, it's what, a thousand tickers you can search through in a, you know, Oh, there's so many. Can't even count them. You know, so how about you make good ones come to you, check out the search part, so you put more time in, in, in analyzing them. You know what I'm saying? Instead of searching. Instead of searching, because if you're doing it while the market's open, opportunities are going to be flying by you left and right. You know what I'm saying? You could miss an opportunity in the time that you're charting it, drawing your trend line, stuff like that, you know? So... That's pretty much the idea as to why I make these scanners and why I make different varieties of them, you know, because maybe uh, people already know that the pattern is is uh, bearish engulfing or something like that. What about the volume aspect or what about if it's near its all time high, you know, because there's a lot of things you have to keep track of. Exactly. There's not just one variable. There's a few, there's a lot, you know, so you might have been focusing on, let's say, the trend line this whole entire time. And you didn't even realize, for whatever reason, that it was near its all-time high or something like that, you know? Or you might not realize that its volume was the most in the last two months. You know, little things like that. You know, the little details that you might miss, hopefully, the channel you don't. Like right here, actually. This is a perfect example while he's saying it. Um, I, I have not once looked at Daku today. I, at least I don't think I have. I instantly go to it, I just mark some TA routine, just marked up my emerging candle, ends up being a really good resistance, resistance that used as a little jump rope, used as support. Uh, using Harlan's whole average, I can see it's using as support right now, while also, and I just found this off of his scanner, the near 52 week high scanner, uh, DOCU popped up. What do I see? Just like my shop, Amazon, all these other plays that we've been covering a lot these past few weeks, guys, this is literally the same exact one. So you can see Doku's never closed this high. Yes, Doku's been this high. Doku's never closed this high. So this is actually looking really, really good, even without the big amount of volume popping up. It's just barely past the previous day. It's not even at average. It doesn't need to be. So that's what I'm going to be looking at, actually. Let's add this to the list before I move on any further, because I will forget. All right, bet. <clears throat> but uh, that was a really awesome example popping up right as he was breaking that down guys that was really, that was really awesome uh, another one that popped up on his scanner a couple weeks back that relates to just that same analysis is this mrna chart a while back uh, i think it was actually just last week we we're looking at the fact that candle had never closed see how the price has been this high but it's never closed this high that's what we were looking at very next day and i'm pretty sure sylvia was the one who broke this down 
uh, got the reset candle and you end up getting your breakout. I don't even think half of us would have been looking near mRNA if it wasn't for the scanner, you know, so it's kind of cool to go back and see that that was on there. So his scanners are literally limiting the plays for everyone. We already know this is in a good potential. We just have to go analyze it real quick. It, it shouldn't take you more than just, you know, five, ten minutes to break down a chart or two. You know, it really shouldn't take you that long. So it's giving you a lot more decision-making time. So that's very awesome you broke it down like that. Uh, but if you guys have questions, more for importantly, know, you know, but I'm going to ask him a few more. More importantly, more importantly, post these, you only have a half hour left. So decide if you want to take the riskier route and trade now or wait for tomorrow for confirmation. So, like me, I'm, I'll am i have 10 tickers, and I got to make sure I'm looking at the important stuff that last half hour, you know? And that's a very good point. You know, just like you said, it doesn't always have to be just for today. You know, let's say you want to wait for a green candle or the reset candle to happen on DOCU. You know, then you're going to wait for that. You don't, you don't have to get in today, but it's at least giving you that momentum, that, that chance. You know, look, you can start seeing the potential behind it, and you can watch it live before it even happens and start analyzing. So let's say tomorrow pops up on DOCU. I'm going to add this to the list tomorrow if it closes like this. No, no BS. This is getting added to the list tomorrow if it closes over that level. Uh, but all I'm going to do tomorrow is my BB system. Guess what? I'm going to add a good common level of support. I'm going to add my previous day high if this is it. Probably will change by then. Uh, and then, of course, my pre-market system. So now you can also apply it for a day trade. It doesn't even have to be a swing trade. It could literally turn into a day trade from this. So it's, again, just finding potential behind these good plays. We're just looking for good potential moves. And his scanners are giving us a lot of those plays. No, not every single one he scans is going to be a golden top tier play. But that's your job. That's our job to go back and analyze it. He's just giving us the plate. you gotta go. You got to go start eating. You know, so let's, let's go through some of these, you know, he has volume above average volume, you know, then you would go to your apps chart. Let's break it down. You know, do you have a pattern? Where is it in comparison to your hole? If that's what you like using, um, you know, what's the volume look like, you know, break it down, use your TA routine, all that good stuff. So that, and that's what his scanner channel is supposed to be for. So very awesome that he's even taking the energy out of his day to even do any of these other extra things like that 52 week high, like doing these other requests for everyone. So, uh, please don't, Go spam his DMs. I, I want to make that very clear. Um, he's a very hard worker. He has a job. He works very, very hard on these scanners, and I'm not joking. He's applied a very great amount of energy into this stuff, so uh, please don't you know, treat him a certain way, but very awesome to have him in here, and uh, thank you, man, for breaking down like what your scanner, like why you wanted to have it in here. Are there any other uh, side things you could give us on your scanners and what we can look for in the future on these? making me cry bro <laughs> um really what i want to i want to reiterate my intro message when i did make this um channel because i think by now i posted like 100 things so you have to scroll back the main focus of this channel is to really look beyond the entries you know what i'm saying this isn't a signal channel this isn't for you to just be like oh this is a good thing like broaden broaden your mind be more creative you know what i'm saying use this channel to confirm confirm things you know if you're playing calls this channel could help you confirm something or if it's gonna go against you it could also help you confirm that you know what i'm saying so that's why i kind of try to make this flexible make this scan scan for different things different directions you know just so you guys have that ability to really see the whole picture when it comes to trading. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's amazing, man. Sorry, I was going through some more of your scanners. <laughs> <laughs> you actually, don't want the gap down one. <laughs> I, was, I was actually reviewing, that's like... uh, I was reviewing <laughs> Fang. This is the one of the plays that we took from yours last week was on the Moustache bot. We took it from here to this day, but you can see just going back and reviewing, you know, this thing is not done. <laughs> rising seller, rising seller. I mean, you're probably going to see a slowdown mm -hmm. now, but... You guys could see just the result. Like, let's say we didn't just overnight that. You know, let's say we wanted to take that into the. That's insane. You know, and that, that, again, I've never played Diamondback Energy. That was entirely off of his scanner. I had never even looked at this before. Same here, bro. I don't look at the. I do want to say this. I do want to say this for, for any of you watching that do have small accounts. I would definitely say, um, if you do take a play from the scanner, make an overnight play for now, cause that's what I'm doing. Um, Bueller knows my story, uh, real quick. I was go. down to my last 85. <laughs> I was down to my last 85 when I was like, damn, I can't put any more money. So I started fresh right before, I think right before we even posted the channel, started using these scans. 
started picking uh, the go and engulfing channel, the engulfing scanners, and I'd pick one, and it'd be an overnight trade in the morning. I'd flip it to a scout mentality, you know, just take my profits. The moment things look bad, take your, take your profits. You know, every day small gains will add up, and then to the it'll get to the point where you could make bigger plays. But if you have small accounts, just focus on for now one day plays. You know, if you can't day trade, that's fine. Focus on one day plays because as long as you're accumulating green day after green day after green day, in the long run, you're gonna see how how much your account has grown. Not too long ago, I had six in a row green days, and I never had that in my life. I was lucky if I had one. You know what I'm saying? So, one thing I do want to do is try to help people who have small accounts, because I've been there. Bueller knows my story. I've been there. It feels amazing to be where I'm at now compared to where I was two months ago. You know, so, I know if I could do it, all of you out there with the same situation can. So, that's one of the main reasons I even started this channel so that Bueller can take these and help us learn how to play them and profit every day. That's an amazing story, man, because that's, that's a really rough, you know, dip to go and down into $85 and then to, to be able to have not just the capability of earning that money, but the mindset, you know, that that's a whole other ball game than can he take 85 bucks to whatever amount of money, you know, that that's that's one hard difficult task but to actually have the mentality to even be able to get up every day go to work you know do good at his job and then also you know come back here have that mentality of being able to take his swings and then not be greedy you know he, he's not greedy he's taking his profits those very next day he's staircasing into it he's not looking to make a you know a million dollars his first month he's looking to make you know as much as he can you know he's not he's not he's not even setting a goal of i'm gonna be at 5k today no it's I'm going to take profits wherever this looks at compared to how my levels are set. You know, if it, let's say he's in calls and it pops over pre-market high. Yeah, he's going to probably look to hold it for a couple minutes longer so you can get more out of it. Sell it as momentum gives out. You know, if you're in puts and, and you go into the next day and you can see it kind of just sitting above the pre-market low and it never breaks. It's just sitting as support. Take your profits. You're not trading the stock price. You're trading the momentum of your contract. You know, so remind yourself of that. Take your percent the next day, then that end of the day, start over, you know, reset, review, reset, plan for a new, and just keep that going, keep it in a cycle, staircase it up. Over time, I almost promise you're all going to be selling one contract, two contracts at the first target, a few at the next, a few at the last, you know, and you're going to appreciate that because you don't just instantly jump to that step. You have to start selling at the first target and, you know, initially start getting towards that, st really staircasing towards That's why we keep saying it like that because that's really what it is and what it feels like and really what the perfect metaphor for it so amazing man thank you for that story dude for real uh, i've know how i know how hard you've worked man you've been kicking ass behind the scenes you know and no credit needed no credit due he he just does it because that's what he wants to do you know he's looking to to grow himself you know he's not looking for <laughs> credibility he's not looking for all this other stuff. So he just wants to grow and see other people grow and that's that's the kind of people you're gonna see me get behind i'm not gonna get behind someone who's looking for anybody play that anybody play that i'm not looking for that kind of crap I'm looking for someone who wants to come in here and help people grow. And what better than someone like him that wants to grow more than anyone else? You know, so definitely appreciate that channel. And like he said, that's another good point he made was if you have a small account, you know, Thank you, bro. definitely appreciate that first target. You know, if you open up the next day and you're up 15 percent, who are you to bitch and moan and complain and say 15 percent is not enough for you because it's only 25 bucks for your account? Okay, that that doesn't mean anything. Let's go. Let's take it to a mathematical standpoint. You know, let's say you make 10% with $100. That's only 10 bucks. But to the person using a thousand, that's a hundred. To the person using 10,000, that's a thousand. On and on and on. You're making the same exact trade as the as that person with more money. The only difference is the math. So yeah, right now when you're beginning out and starting out and trying to grow, yeah, it's gonna not be amazing amount of money. It's gonna just be that. But you, guess what? We're not focused on the equity. We're not focused on the money. We're not focused on the greed and the fear. We're focused on the percentages, the facts. So definitely get into that, guys, and definitely appreciate that scanner channel. I'm not joking. I read that every <laughs> single day, part of our Power Hour stream for a reason. It isn't just to, you know, powder up everybody. It is a legit, amazing channel you should read every single day. It should be part of your end-of-day process and beginning-of-day process, just getting a good picture of stuff. But I hope Damn, this... bro, I didn't know we can curse. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, but I hope this...
recording and everything when i put this up later i hope a lot more people reach out to this and actually you know watch it and see it and you know see what we're talking about but um you know for the remainder of this we're just kind of go go through some stuff if you guys have any questions for him or for anyone else here who wants to go through some stuff you know let us know but we're just Miller, i don't want to make one important point what's up bro um staircasing the way i have definitely changed my mindset when it comes to your losses because back then i used to really freak out having a raid day now because i know i have a consistent way of building my account a red day doesn't really affect me the way it used to before so like i said if you have a small account if you're struggling overnight or like even a week because you know, i put I'm, i turned 85 to 2000 in a week doing that same strategy just taking it day by day you know so then when you do have a red day it doesn't affect you as much, you know? It doesn't make you start banging your head against the wall and trying to figure out what's going on. You know? And the, the one or two days that I, I strayed away from that, I paid for it. But I didn't freak out. Just got back to the routine, and here I am building the account again. So this me speaking from personal experience, you know, it, it really is important to staircase your account, your, great, your gains, your growth, just like Buda says. Like, you will see over time, the amount it grows but you also got to have the patience for that too you know what i mean you can't just try to go grab it all at once and i like that it's really good talk because it's nothing but facts you know i think everyone's like that you know i'm pretty sure every single one of us were like that we want to get into things a little too hastily and it's, it's no point you know take things slow and like that was a really good point that's even a deeper like emotional point of view um is what he said like that loss won't affect you like that's exactly how that feels like because you don't you don't feel like you can't lose but a, lo a loss should not make you red a loss should not make you you know turn around and oh, i'm a bad trader i don't know what i'm doing and completely lose your cool on everything you know um you, sh you should be used to the system and how things work you know and start getting to used to it if you aren't you know, set your daily routine, go through it. You know, you, you'll have pure confidence in your system and how you set up your trade plans just because of that. And, like, that was a really good point. It won't even affect you. You have that armor now. There's some cheap secrets I added to the main list, so really everybody's capable of playing this now. I used to just put your typical over $100 stocks. Now I'm even playing under $20 stocks, you know? so i really try to try to help everybody in the group you know from small accounts to big accounts experience to new traders you know that's what the channel is all about it's just helping every single person that's part of that is a part of this group that's very awesome man accommodating for everybody because it's not just you know amazon traders in here and it's not just cvs traders in here it's a mix of everybody everybody some people like semiconductors some people like tech some people like very cheap tickers and that's just how it is you know some people need to be playing cheaper tickers so that's a really really good thing so definitely be looking at those you know and a big thing that his channel stands for really is limiting yourself you know so if you're someone who has a small account limit yourself you know and a big thing i used to talk about with trading for day traders was you know let's say you're you're not really good at three bar plays there's for some reason you just cannot trade a three bar play to save your life you know then stop playing them stop looking for them if you see it pop up don't play it you know let's say you're really really good at pre-market high breakouts or you're just a really good pre-market trader you know then that's your strong suit stick to that for a while staircase with that for a while you know don't don't just keep you know stretching yourself out and then going crazy over it. you know that's really gonna mentally be tolling but uh definitely focus on just you know limiting yourself and that's an amazing thing that his channel stands for you know we're not in here to just look at every single chart and and just kind of lazily go through it we're not also here to just not find any tickers you know there's tons of tickers i can look through right now that have <clears throat> more volume than they did the previous trading day so now i can go through really a lot of these and just you know kind of know these have better volume than they did before are there any patterns setting up i can see pdd is giving me a preemptive pattern you know if this ends up giving me a gap up tomorrow i can look for a good bullish momentum to the top side of this little recent range it's built you know that's going to look really good so Utilize the tools you guys have in the chat. You know, you guys have news feeds. You have all kinds of educational sections in here. Um, it's just, it's really on you at the end of the day now. You know, and coming in here every single day, adding, you know, as adding this Discord server and everything we have inside of it as a part of your daily routine is an amazing part of starting that. So, how about we get this party started? Yeah, I'm ready for some scanners. Some more. I love this, brother. 
Leland uh help me uh change it a little bit because now I added a one black crow and a one white soldier to the scanner. Oh did Mythin pay him to do that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't That's know. really smart. Black All crows I... black crows are really, really uh, common and why Mythin likes them a lot is because they're very common and can pop up leading to better plays. A lot of the time you see any kind of move, you'll end up seeing somewhere in between the continuation, the start of it, the end of it, you'll end up seeing a crow or a soldier to some extent. Um, and that, I don't know why that's one of the most popular candlesticks that pop up. It's It just is. A lot of days gap up and down, so you're going to get a lot of those weird, you know, start in between days, which we like that too. You know, you and me like the piercing lines and bullish engulfing, so we like that just as much. I don't mind playing a, a crow or a soldier, you know? Those are both really good patterns. It's definitely, it's definitely helped me start off, start off good rebuilding the accounts, playing engulfings and stuff like that. Another big thing that I like about this channel that I want to touch upon too is it doesn't take away from anything. You know, if anything, it opens up your eyes more. Like, if you go through this and you're like, what the heck's a DCC or a One Black Crow or an Engulfing? You know, that's going to make you ask us, and that's going to make you go into the content that we have provided for that. You know, we have a whole course on this. I have multiple channels in the in the chat for this, and we have multiple videos and workshops on this. So definitely take advantage of the tools you have that can help you use this scanner channel better. You know, utilize what you have here to help you utilize this tool better. So definitely helps to at that's least That's how the, the, the channel's patterns. even born. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, amazing. I don't want to play another energy. Sorry, D.U.K. Yay. Okay. I'm also utilizing... I'm not going to be utilizing his entire strat where he's utilizing, you know, uh, a whole candle confirmation under it. But I am still going to be utilizing Harlan's hole because it is very scarily accurate. Uh, so it will just be there for a stream, and honestly, I just want to promote it more. I think Harlan's strategy is really cool, and it's very simple, and I think a lot of people are going to really love his uh, workshop when it comes out. He'll be the very next workshop video to come out, so you're definitely not going to want to miss that. But you'll see me throw it on time to time again, just to kind of utilize. You guys know I'm a pattern trader. I, already, I mean, I already look at the daily, so Harlan's strategy really doesn't get in the way of me or anything. So if anything, it's just going to empower the trading. Just get some general look at some stuff. Get, you know, where do I see? I see weakness here, but we're at kind of the bottom of this little recent channel. So I see EA is a 50 50 right now. You know, utilizing Harlan's strategy, this looks bearish. I'm going to use double confirmation once it does end up cracking whatever this trend line is right here uh, as a bigger drop. So once that happens, we have a really, really big EA drop to play. So uh, right now, for an overnight swing, not really liking it, but it does really, really look good for a preemptive potential play to look for. So we can move on. Guild. That was a little better. Still kind of the same story, though. Is that another kind of 50-50 area? This is really where it could hold up and have a good buy reset day tomorrow. So you're going to be looking for a good confirmation candle tomorrow. What I mean by that is you want to see it open up, give you a good red day, set up your pre-market system. So let's say since we're not swing trading it. I know that a pre-market low breakout on GILD is a lot bigger than just a normal pre-market low breakout, you know, than when it was up here. You know, now I know once it does this, it has a higher potential move to the downside. So definitely be looking out for that. Any, I'm pretty sure it's another energy stock. Yep. A lot of energy is popping up. That's good though. You want to start when you go through these two guys. You'll you'll notice, and I, I've seen you notice this too. Is uh, I'll, you'll start to see a lot of the same patterns are popping up across the market, or you'll start to see a lot of the same sector have a lot of the same patterns. That's really good if you notice that. Okay, that, that gives you a lot more confidence that that sector or stock or area of the market is going to be moving that direction. Even if it's only for a short-term overnight move, at least you have that awareness now. But definitely utilize that. If you guys haven't checked out the workshop in which I talk about indexes and all that, it's on the back of Jay Bakes workshop video. So definitely watch that when you can. Uh, but the main part of that video is his volume, but there was other stuff covered. Indexes was a big thing too. Let's go to Pepsi. Pepsi, wow, finally. This looks really, really good. See? I would never look at Pepsi on my own. <laughs> Big thing with this is not just saying that it's overextended, which is some pretty easy TA to spot out. You know, Yeah, it's very overextended. You know, not even just from its breakout from Harlan's Hole and all that good stuff. So... I want to get a good Fibonacci going, so let's go from recent resistance to meet the bone high. You know, where can we say price can retrace to? You know, where's a very high probability of retracement level? Is that 50%? So we know that that's a really good one. And then our emerging candles, we know that as well. 
So not only do we have a good day trading opportunity to break below here, now we know if we go under 154.55 tomorrow or overnight, we're looking really, really good. Uh, but definitely looking bearish as you have a bearish engulfing. I like the wicks on the top side. The only thing that's messing with me is the volume. Very low. It's not an amazing amount of volume, which leads me to believe there is a chance. You do just have a sideways range trade day and inside trading day, uh, which is very high probability. That happens a lot of the time. As you can see with this stock, very commonly actually, because Pepsi, it's a very strong fundamental company. Of course, they're going to trade a little slower. They're going to be like your KOs, your Walmarts, your John Deere's. They're going to be slow builders. Uh, so, of course, you're not going to look to want to just overnight short Pepsi all the time. This, of course, is a pretty decent opportunity compared to most, though. Actually, here's a great example of what I was just saying. So you see how price kind of approached here and looks bearish right there? Very next day is just an inside day. That's, that's all I'm looking for. So you could just have a boring day and then it bleed. I'm not saying it's not going to bleed. Uh, but some, di some days you will get that cough in between, and that is how you can tell. When you have a low amount of volume, and you can see we actually have more volume on this day, and it still had an inside day give it that way. So you, know, you can see low volume. No, it's not an amazing spot. And this wasn't as overextended. This is more overextended. So I would actually put my money on this one as a way, way better setup uh, than this other time where it didn't have good volume. It actually had better volume, but not overextended. And here you have low volume and it's overextended. So I would say that pushes me over the edge of saying Pepsi's a lot more better setup than over here. Let's go through some more. It's got another list here. Uh, APPS. Ooh, that's looking pretty good. Under or Extended under that hole, but also on the bottom of its trend. Just kind of skip through these, see which one pops out to us the most. Big C, I think we played that one before. BNGO, we analyzed this one earlier and we were saying we wanted to see if there's going to be some more range trade. Again, low volume. Again, just looking for more confirmation. And again, not all these plays are going to be buy, 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 buy. You know, some days we only find two or three, some days we find like 20. I mean, Y'all remember last Friday we found about 100. So that, that was an amazing feeling. <laughs> uh, CHPT definitely looks good to try and pull up over time. Chewy, see this is one that everyone was already kind of looking at, and it's with his scanner. So, good volume, above average volume, closing over his hole, not an entire candle, so not as strong as if an entire candle was to close over the hole. Bullish engulfing, now let's look for positioning. Let's get us a good emerging candle, turn support, let's get our range. Uh, we can grab a recent trend now. Let's go to the four hour. And actually, it's looking really, really good as an 80% entry for puts now that I've gone to the four hour. As you can see, it's breaking under that trend line and has lowering buyer volume on the four hour. So that actually looks really good for puts, even though it started as a bullish candlestick. And sometimes that's going to happen, guys. You're going to lead to that kind of stuff where it ends up being. Uh, bearish but as a bullish candlestick and we've seen this many times uh where you have weak positioning so again you know and this this is why i cover this in that pattern video you know when it comes to patterns where do you want to find your bullish and bearish candlesticks you, know, you don't want to just find a bullish candlestick randomly you know at the top of a trend for more upside movement you're going to want to find it at the bottom of a downtrend trying to move up off of a good momentum push so you're going to want it to be the start of a move not after a move has already been made right you know, so that's where you're going to be looking for your bearish candlesticks, you know, so just thinking from a BB system point of view, you know, when a stock breaks out and it comes back and it retests, you know, that's that 80% entry, that's that retest, you know, so what am I seeing right here? I'm seeing price push up, fall and break its trend line, push up with, yes, it has average volume, but it, that doesn't mean, you know, the most amazing, that doesn't always mean green. You know, look at this, this had a pretty big rising above average volume day, we still went down, just part morning earnings, but as you can see, that's what it looks like on our screen now. It looks like a good 80% entry, you know, breaking it down on the 4-hour. That looks pretty good. I might actually take this for a trade overnight. So I'll have to see how that looks here in a bit. Uh, let me just mark, mark that down in live voice chat. So I can go back to it and not forget. Let's look through some more. Uh, cost is on here. This is also, I think I saw multiple people post this earlier as well. Oh, that's right. We covered this with Leland this morning. We got to break this down a lot more uh, in depth. So, 
good double top against this, and yes, it is a bullish engulfing, but again, just like that last example, not every bullish candlestick is going to be bullish. Yes, this could be short-term retracement. Why do we say that? Let's just point out a few tips. Uh, one, we have relatively lower volume under your average volume. Two, it needs to close over this to be that all-time high close. So if that closes over, that's looking really good. If it was to close flat, I would say it's not looking so hot anymore. Two, look on top. We've rejected the same level before. Uh, we actually have less volume than we did the first time we came up here. So, again, a second weaker push would indicate, as overextension, a pullback to that trend line. So, just saying short-term retracement, I don't think we're saying cost is going to zero. I think we all agree cost is a very bullish company fundamentally. Uh, so, definitely don't see them coming down. But, you know, short-term retracement is what we're kind of looking at on that one. Dash, again, another one of those. I mean, it's just, you, you have to wait. You know, if this ends up closing above this level, yes, it looked good. But you're still going to need more confirmation after that. You know, why do I have that level marked? It's the 50% uh, control point of this recent breakout. From this double top breakout over to the meat of the high, you can see prices actually retrace perfectly to the 50% control point. And I'm going to be looking tomorrow on the day trading watch list uh, if Dash ends up breaking under that 169. Because that is going to be a very, very nice high probability trade. Actually, shout out to Harlan for showing me this one. But I also like seeing it on your scanner because now I know it has a little more behind it. Dash, uh, DG. See, like that'd be a bullish. I don't want to take that. That's too overextended. You wouldn't want to. You're a little too late to the party. FedEx, you're gonna of course want to wait for close over all time high or you know those type of plays. Either like how we've been covering with mRNA, Shop, Amazon. You know we've been seeing some of them pop up here and there. So it is really good uh, timing. Let's clear that. FedEx still holding under on the daily using whole piercing line but not really amazing spot yet again i mean it is in comparison to the downtrend example i gave but again your high probability would just be top of trend line it is underextended over that or under that sorry overextended under that uh hole though so you could actually see a pull up Let's see what our lines give us here yeah you definitely have to hit over 296 so even if we didn't want to swing you got a 296 there ends up breaking under 291 you have a very solid first target at 285s see fedex is starting to set up for a really really good day trade stock tomorrow fire eye seen that one on a few before now gme i refuse to look at that net See, and that's another one of those 80%. And actually, net was on the scanner when we did cover the last 80%. Last week, we had covered, you know, uh, there was a lot of examples where you have price breaking the trend line, coming back up, retesting, and then failing. You have a lot of examples of price just like this one, where it's just under its trend line and failing perfectly, just like a 40% entry would give you. Um, so you're seeing multiple examples of a good break of trend or to the downside type move for a lot of these, even just from last week. So if you guys haven't caught that recording, that's also on YouTube. But that was a really cool one because we got to cover a bunch of charts. We got to cover a bunch of really good topics. So uh, we don't record a lot of these because they are like, you know, 30 minutes to an hour every time. But um, I do like to cover most of them on recording for people when they can't catch up because there are a ton of plays that people are missing out on on these. And even if it's not to make money, it is still amazing to see for good review. If you aren't making money, you at least need to be learning. Uh, Roblox is on here. And this is another perfect one because me and Mythen actually got to talk about this this morning. If this isn't going to be holding as a bullish engulfing, which this is a pretty weak one, uh, we'll be looking for the 70, below 75 drop to 7180s for a better play. This is actually going to be where we wanted it initially from my last week TA, so if you haven't seen that, please go check out last Sunday's video. Uh, but that, that was really awesome, so we're going to be looking for in those low 70s for our new Roblox position, but that's going to be one we hold for a week or two, maybe even more. So if you wanted to catch in on that, make sure to catch that alert. Roku, we kind of covered this one in the beginning, uh, but it's also failing its 50% control point. Again, tomorrow is going to be a big day for Roku. If it doesn't retain above this, it's not going to be looking good for them. Uh, if they end up getting above this, they still have a chance of projecting that top trend line before actually being bearish. So I would be looking at that tomorrow especially. I will definitely be looking at this tomorrow. So if you're in here in Power Hour Stream, you'll definitely get the update on it. Uh, but I am looking for Roku to make a short pop and then drop if it doesn't just end up keep dropping from here because i really don't like that it hasn't pulled up enough you know this is 50 percent of this day but it's not looking too hot on the bigger breakout uh, scheme of things on this downtrend channel and i drew that on the four hour so if you want to go 
Double check me, you can, on the four hour. Uh, run. Probably just wait on that one because we're all kind of waiting on solar to chill out. But run is definitely one of my favorite solar tickers to look at. Very good options chain. SE, I actually lost money on this last week. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of same setups. None of them are low volume though, none of them look bad, and all of them look really good to throw on a tomorrow list. I could literally have a 40 stock watch list thanks to, thanks to this scanner. You mind throwing up pins, bro? Pins, yeah, no problem. <clears throat> uh, so on pins here, I do see a good support there I can mark. Get that top marked. Again, it just it keeps hitting me with that like 80% feel to it. Like, yeah, it's a bullish candlestick, but it, it just it doesn't look too good. Again, it's not even touching average volume. You know, it might have more volume than the previous day, but this just looks like another one of those setups where I need more information. You know, the sense of giving me a, a, a really good levels tomorrow. If Jay Bake was here, he'd be tearing this one up uh, on the day trading channel tomorrow. Let's see. How did it do today? So I wanted to bring it up. <laughs> Damn, this did really good. Yeah, I need to add this to the list, man. Honestly, pins is one of those ones that if Jay Bake is in here, I need to be adding it because pins moves. Pin, <laughs> pins moves a lot every single day, just about. And he's been busy. You know, he's not like gone forever or anything. He's just very busy right now. So we'll have him back soon. But I focus on momentum on my trading, and judging by what I'm looking at, it looks like pins could have a nice move tomorrow. That could, definitely in a good range. Like I said, guys. Yeah. Like I said, guys, one day overnight trade at, at least, you know, make make a overnight trade like first case scenario. So that way, no matter what, you're green. Yeah, there's no need to hold it for, you know, a million dollars in profit. You know, you guys end up getting that percentage. Take it, you know, and if you don't like the momentum of it, let's say you get emotional in the morning. Take it, you know, any second that you think you can tell someone how much you're up or you have time to screenshot it and send it to your friend. You also had time to sell it. I don't really have like a estimate on where I would say we go tomorrow on it, Quamby. Yeah, it probably looks funny because I have an indicator on it, to be honest. If I take that off, it looks a lot more like me. <laughs> uh, but a big thing I'm watching on pins, just from, you know, re-reviewing it, is we are re-breaking back into that. No, this isn't the first time we've been in this gap. So I'm not saying this is a good uh, gap fill play. But I, I do like the start of this bullish engulfing. But I would like to see some more some more uh, confirmation because if you end up just getting, you know, another inside day, th that's what I think we're going to get. If you ask me what I think is happening tomorrow, I think we get another inside day tomorrow, uh, which will lead to a big move. But this is all just straight candlestick analysis, Quamby. I was just saying uh, bullish engulfing, low, not amazing amount of volume. It probably won't move a crazy amount just yet, but this thing is definitely priming up. Because it also, let's let's cover, you know, from our midpoint analysis, you know, just from recent breakout, you know, it, it's actually holding a really, really good area. It's at its 100% breakout point from its gap fill. So it didn't just fill the gap. It came back down and did its 100% retracement. So it's, it's really back to a 50-50 standpoint from how I look at things. You know, this could be a really big move to the upside or a really big move to the downside. But either way, uh, he's right. It's, it's definitely going to be moving big very soon. And that's a big thing, you know, uh, what was that one we did so well on? Was it FSOI? It was. This is the perfect example. So, on this gap, we end up focusing on this for, you know, a gap fill play. Price broke into it, kind of poked its head. We weren't really looking at it yet. We liked this morning star. It gave us this little bull flag look to it. We were in on this candle. Price ended up moving up. We took our profits. But then the further analysis led to a lot more lessons than anyone could ever imagine. So price ended up going up, breaking out higher, and doing a 100% retracement now, just like that chart is, right? A big thing with gaps is you want, all right, so let's say this is your gap, right? You want price to fill it so it can have that initial fill, but you also want price to go back down and fill that 100% so you know that it is filled. 100%, that is the new range. That is an amazing strong point, and that is a big thing that played into our Beyond success. You always hear people say Beyond, Bueller loves Beyond. It's because I used to cover it so heavily and the biggest part about it was this gap range. 
the biggest thing about Beyond Trades when we took them were, was that one gap range from the very beginning after their IPO. This ended up leading to one of our biggest put plays we took in this chat in the very, very beginning of Beyond. So it, it's just those kind of things that lead to that stuff. And guess what it ended up doing? It didn't just come back down. It came back up, filled that gap again, 100% retracement, filled it again. So it tried to hold that range, failed. Later on, when I saw Price hold on to it, that is an amazing sign, knowing that Price has never held that range. This is the first time Price has ever tried to hold ever that range. I mean, look how emotional it got. Look at all those wicks on the top side. You know, so uh, when it comes to gap range analysis, definitely be looking for the fill and the 100% retracement. Those are at least two things you want to see. And no, it doesn't always have to do that, but it is something you will definitely want to look for in the future. Let's look through a couple more. Uh, I need to type up a trade plan for something real quick. I actually really like uh, Harlan CMCSA. If you guys want to check out one of my probably favorite ones. Me and him were in a call for probably like an hour, hour and a half before this one. And it, we were really liking the trend break. Uh, but also, let me add his hole back so you guys can see it. Nope, I don't want a thousand twenty. One second though, guys. 